Is, uh, is Brandon getting the, most of the, the snaps at left tackle out there? Are you guys still rotating guys through, and, and which guys might you be rotating through? I, you know, one of the great things about what Coach Franklin does preseason camp is, is you have the ability to do a lot of mixing and matching, but you know that guys are still getting a lot of reps. So uh, Brennan's getting uh, getting his fair share over there, and he's doing a nice job. The, the nice thing about, about Brennan Mann is he's got a ton of experience. He's played guard, he's played tackle, and I, and I love that about him. And, and uh, he's one of the guys that at the end of the day, he'll be in that 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 starting five mix. He, he brings a lot of great things to the table. Now it's just a matter of figuring out where that all fits. And that's the great thing about practice 13, 14, 15. You can experiment, you can try some different things. And, and we get to about three or four more in, maybe by Saturday, we'll start to want to pare that down. But uh, it's interesting, it's like hockey lines. You, you, you kind of see who, who works together and how it all fits together so we saw Mennett and McGovern working at the end of practice with the first team can you yep. talk about their progress and does it surprise you that as true freshmen they've come as far as they have so far you know what nothing surprises me anymore in this game um, you know I think both both Connor and, and and Michael are guys that uh, you know mentally they came in and, and they felt like they were guys that wanted to play right away and physically, they're both guys that have that ability. The single biggest challenge for, for guys like that is just just the mental. You know, when you go from day to day and you're going from defense is going from three man front to four man front, and then they're they're going, you know, blitz one day and then they're 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 dropping back, you know, seven and they're eight the next day. It, that's the part that gets on these guys' backs about this time of camp. So, you know, I want to put them in the, in the worst possible scenarios and see how they'll respond. And sometimes it's been good, and sometimes there's there's work that needs to be done. But the great thing about both those guys is they are they are so attentive into everything detail wise, and their future's really bright. James said going into the season, you'd like to have one unit established. At what point do you feel you need to have that starting five? I, I think that when you get to the point when you start really focusing in on Kent, that you need to, you, you know, the guys need to, if, you, if you've gotten to that point, the guys need to know at that point and, and you need to start working it that way. And so there, there's still more time. And uh, the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put out a de facto starting group. And then there are some guys who say, well, you know, that's the way it's going to be. The biggest thing that we have going on right now is we've got tremendous competition. And there are some guys who, you know, who I thought early in camp might be that guy. And there are some other guys who have taken a big step forward. So you want that competition for as long as possible. But, you know, we won't get too many more practices in, and then we'll start settling it in. Matt, why do you think it's why move man to uh, tackle? What, what you oh, see in that oh, it goes down to what I told these guys the first day I got here, the best five are going to play. So, you know, if, if we have a surplus of guards that we feel like are, are really taking uh, taking care of business and a guy like Brendan Mann who has the versatility can go play tackle for us and that gives us the, puts the best five on the field, that's what we're going to do. So, um, you know, I think one of the things that people make a mistake is they say, hey, this guy is just that or just that. I told my guys all, don't, don't think of yourself as just one guy, one spot, one position. Go out there, play your tail end off. If you're one of the best five, we'll adjust it and make sure you're out there helping us beat Kent State. You said, that, you said that a couple of uh, guys have taken big steps forward and surprised you. Uh, can you give us a couple of those guys and what they've shown you? Um, you know, I, I think um, you know the, the the freshman offensive linemen. I think have done a good job. Really, all four of them have really uh, really done a nice job. Um, you know, uh, uh, Ryan Bates really uh, uh, has really kind of risen up to have that men starter mentality and, and he started to play that way which was great to see so you know there, there's a lot of uh, there, there's a lot of guys that really all the guys have taken a step up now it's just a matter of, of who's made the biggest strides and I think a guy like Ryan Bates is a great example of that. What was the uh, thought process behind moving Nelson to right tackle? Um, it just there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, you know one of the big things was was that um, felt like that that we had a better collection of, of left tackles to be able to, to draw from, and and uh, you also talk to the individual guys and you see how they feel about it, and you, you try and put it all together, and when you do, that's when you come out with your best mixture. So, um, not saying that he won't go back to the left, but I like the luxury of knowing that he can but also being able to work them at the right and see where, what we have at left tackle. So, you know, as much as you guys would like me to say, here's our starting five, that, that's not going to happen because we have about eight or nine guys that I, I want them to compete and I want to be, be able to tell 
Coach Franklin, when we're in there, I want to be able to say, hey, these are the five guys I feel best about. Let him get his input and then go forward with it when that time comes. Don't I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to crown anybody too soon and, and and let them get complacent and let people think that the, you know that the, that the competition's over and we've had great competition and I think uh, you know Coach Spencer will tell you that's raised the level of of our side of the uh, of the field and and those defensive guys have talked about it a bunch. They you know they, they they love the fact that guys are going out there and getting after it really right through you know about 16 number 16 number 17 on the depth chart. When do you What's, want to make that decision? Thing or just however long it takes, or oh, yeah, you, you if you put timetables on things like that, you paint yourself into corners. So, uh, you know, we got good work. We're Wednesday now, we'll get through Saturday with the scrimmage, and then you know, there, there, it there are discussions daily on every position. That is a big part of what goes on in campus, the personnel discussions. So we discuss it every day. We make the changes and the adjustments accordingly and then move forward. So I think once you start getting into by this time next week, you're going to want to have that group of guys ready to rock. How does the quality that an offensive lineman has to have to play as a true freshman earn starts right away? You know, it's not one. Um, you know, physically, you've got to be able to, to handle it, and you got to be able to handle the grind of what, not just what's going on now, but really this leads into what's going to happen throughout the season. So you got to make sure a guy can handle that. So there's a mental aspect, there's a physical aspect, and really just kind of the guy's mindset. And the thing I love about it is, is that our freshmen, I think nowadays, what you find with most freshmen is they don't want to redshirt, they want to play. You know, they want to get in and play right away. So they, they train more. They're more prepared coming in. I think that's been a big shift in the last 10, 12, 15 years is before, as soon as a guy signed, he's like, well, you know, I got a year and a half off because I'm going to go in and red shirt and they'll tell me what to do. And then red shirt freshman year, I'll figure it out. Guys aren't, they don't have that mindset anymore. They just keep moving forward and keep going. So I think that's a big part of it is how developed the guys come in, how physically prepared they are. And at what point do you know that, you know, maybe they can handle more? Is, does that start in recruiting? Because they haven't been here on campus before. No, and, and that's the benefit of getting a guy here early too. Getting a guy here, at, 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 you know, mid, mid-year is you get that extra chance during spring ball to kind of kind of see where those guys are makeup wise um, you know they come in they do their thing in the summer and and you know you, you hope that they're doing all the right things and really once you get to the to the fall camp like I said this is a great litmus test you know they, they go we have afternoon practice yesterday and we get after it and then we turn around and we're back on the field you know 14 hours later that's hard that's hard for anybody and for them, though, you can really tell how those guys handle that, like I said, physically and mentally. So it isn't one particular thing. It's keeping a close eye on how they're going about it when the things get a little tough, when the grind, I, I call it, when the bear starts jumping on their back. And if you have a guy that kind of shrugs that off and keeps going, you know you got a guy that you can count on, you know, week five, week eight, week 11, week 14. What's been the biggest surprise to you working with these guys? Obviously, you knew what you were getting into. You saw the stuff from last year. What's been that biggest surprise so far as you can? You know what? This group of guys, they, they, they are willing to put the work in. There has not been a single day that I've come out here, and I've been around groups where you've had to pull teeth. Like I was just saying, to have a, a less than 12-hour, about a 12, 14-hour turnaround, I've seen where the practices have gone dead, and it all starts with those old linemen. These guys, a guy like Brian Gaia, who's been through so much, for him to come out, and, and he basically wills these guys to go every day, and they'll follow him, and, and I love that about him. I don't have to pull teeth. I don't have to come out here, kick them in the tail end, tell them it's not acceptable. They get it. They understand it. Those older guys, him, Andrew Nelson, Wendy Laurent, um, Derek Dowry, those guys are the ones that are that are that are leading. They're the ones that are setting the tone and allows me to coach and continue to work on the fundamentals and those things. So I love that about this group is they are willing to put in. If we could, they'd work out here eight hours. They'd still be out here if they let us. And they'd be still grinding, still working. I love that about them. Along those lines, what are some of the key attributes for offensive linemen in the no huddle up tempo offense? Because I'm assuming you're asking them to do a lot more running than they might usually. Uh, yes and no. I think the biggest transition that you have 
is the guys understanding when the communication happens. Because if you really watch, you know, if the guys find the ball and get there, they can take some time, they can get the rest. You know, that first part of it, we always are preaching tempo, tempo, tempo. And then they kind of get a feel for what the tempo is going to be from the quarterback. But that's when they need to make their communication. They need to find the ball. And when normally they're standing in the huddle waiting for the quarterback to give the call, that's what they're doing at the line. And that's what that's what they've got to have great communication skills. You know, they, they've got to make sure that they're out there communicating, talking, reviewing the last play quickly and then getting ready for the next one. So I don't I don't necessarily look at it as anything different. It's just a little bit of the mindset of how they need to how they need to get their information disseminated to each other and how they need to communicate with each other. You mentioned that the, the freshmen are preparing uh, you've seen them preparing as if they're gonna come in and have an impact right away. Is that something that's been unique? I mean you've been around uh, seen a couple different units. So is that unique to Penn State because of the depth issues that no, I, I think it's I think it's unique to Penn State because this is an outstanding group of freshmen. This is a, a you know I, I don't know about other schools, but I'd say this is probably one of the best recruiting classes offensive wise, offensive line wise. So when you have that, and those guys meet up to to the hype and they come out and they put their work in, then those guys are going to be more, you know, a lot of times you hear with offensive linemen, well, we took this guy because he's a developmental guy. He may be a little bit undersized or, you know, a little bit thin and we got to put weight on. Maybe he's going to be a guy, you know, year three or year four. I mean, when I got here, you talk about you talk about falling into a great situation. I mean, that is a fantastic group of, of four young men. Two of them came early, got a jump start mid year, and I think the other two wish they would have. Um, and, and so that there's the mindset, but there's also the ability to back it up. And you don't always find that. There, that isn't always the case with an offensive line group. You spent so much time with. Uh, sorry, you spent so much time with Jerry Kill. Was it? Making a transition to here was it easy. Did it help at all that you had someone else on staff here that you knew, obviously, from way back? Um, I'll tell you something. Th this staff here is unbelievable. Um, I, I was, I was 24 hours on the job. I, I flew to Florida. I met up with Josh Gaddis, and you'd have thought Josh and I grew up together in the same neighborhood. I mean, he welcomed me, threw me in the car. We went recruiting. Uh, I get back. I go with those guys. We get ready for spring ball. To be honest with you, it's felt like I've been with these guys 17 years, and, and that's a credit to them. They said, hey, come on in. Welcome. They trusted Coach Franklin's decision, Coach Moorhead's decision, and uh, that's been awesome. I, I, I feel like I, I feel like I belong here. I felt like that since day one. Um, I'm excited to be here. Um, like I said at the beginning, if I felt any better, I'd be twins. I mean, this is this is where I want to be. This is where I felt like I was meant to be. So, uh, and those guys are a big part of it. In what ways, if any, does having two guys battling for a quarterback spot <laughs> affect you know the ability for an offensive line to gel? Affect maybe position battles you guys are having within your units, where maybe those quarterbacks do things a little bit differently the way they go about. There's only one thing they do a little different. They have a little bit different. Uh, rhythm in their cadence. So every once in a while, the guy's got to do a little bit of adjusting. But um, I, I can tell you this much: um, our guys, our guys love the quarterback group. They love them. Those guys take great care of them. Uh, they they make sure those O linemen know they love them. And uh, I really don't think, other than maybe just kind of that snap count issue, I don't think they really. And I, I don't, don't they didn't an issue. It's just kind of a quirk. I don't think they really care who's back there in a good way because they know both those guys are going, going to do a great job uh, running this offense. They they are ready to rock. They say, hey, whoever, Coach Franklin, Coach Moorhead, decide and see fit who that guy's going to be, let's roll. And, and, I, and I love that about the group.